During his lifetime, he was not known for a quality that people knew about him after he passed away. And that was his generosity. I'm sure you remember a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Seven type of people will be under the shadow on the day of judgment provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the sun will be only a fist away from people's head. And one of those people, رَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمُ يَمِينُهُ مَا تُنْفِقُ شِمَالُهُ A person who gives the charity in such a way that his right hand doesn't know what his left hand has given. Which means no one knows what this person has given. So secret in his charities. During his lifetime, people didn't know what type of charities he was given, except, yes, <coughs> when normally a person is giving, then people know it. But after he passed away, they realized that Imam Zain al-Abideen, rahimahullah, was taking care of hundred poor families in Medina Munawwara. Even those families didn't know who was bringing the food to their home, because every morning they will find food at their door. Night time, he would carry these bags of the food and to these hundred families regularly they are getting their meal and their living, uh, their, their necessities of their life. Every day, hundred families are getting, getting it from there and they themselves don't know who's bringing it to them. SubhanAllah. People are talking about Santa Claus. That one day he threw a bag of money into a, from a window here, hundred families every day. And they knew that it was from him because the day he passed away, that it stopped from that day on. So they knew oh, it was coming from him. And when they were washing his body, the people who were washing the body had to go and ask his family why there are so many bruises on his back, on his shoulder. They said because of carrying all of these bags of food every night on his shoulders. doesn't want to tell anyone to carry it for him because people would know it. wants to keep the charity secret. Bruises on his back. Imagine food for hundred families. Carrying it on his shoulder every night and delivering it to their doors. SubhanAllah. We really need to know who our ancestors are. We need to tell our children who these people were. They will be very proud of their Iman and their Deen and what we are getting through this Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, as it is the rule of the world. Whenever a person would do something good, they will always have be enemies of the person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِ for every prophet, there are enemies out of jinns and shayateen and out of human beings. Shayateen al-ins wal jinn. From shaytan of jinns and shayateen of human beings who are the enemies of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. And any person who will, start, who will step in that direction of doing any work for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will always be opposition to the person. And of course, who will be more virtuous than Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. And Allah says, this is the rule that Anbiya will always have enemies of shayateen and of human beings themselves. Imam Zainul al Abideen rahimahullah. Because of his qualities that Allah blessed him with, and always there are people who don't like to see good people, do not like to see good qualities, they don't like to hear good things about others. Yes, you talk evil about people, they're very happy. But they can't hear something good about others. Some people had jealousy against him once he's walking out of the masjid. And a person is standing cursing at him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses those people with these high qualities, with their iman, with their practice, with their ibadah. When they get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they start practicing the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also. They learn the manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also. And this is what's very important for us to learn. And this is why I'm reading a few incidents from the life of Imam Zainul Abideen rahimahullah. So we'll see how can we control our anger? What should we, how should we react to people who are opposing <coughs> us? Who don't like <coughs> us? Who hate us? He's walking out of the masjid. 
a person keeps on cursing at him and he's walking as if he have not hurt anything kept on walking the person is after him and finally the person says ani, I mean you Imam Zain al-Abideen rahimahullah replied Wa'anka a'rad Yes, and I'm ignoring you And another occasion a person was cursing at him While he is in the masjid with his students He had all the power to One of the students would take care of that man But <coughs> As soon as his students wanted to react Imam Zain al-Abideen rahimahullah Said to that person who was cursing at him He said, my brother if Allah won't forgive me, then I'm worse than what you're saying. If Allah won't forgive me, I'm worse than what you're saying. <coughs> Another occasion, when a person was saying something to him, Imam Zain al-Abideen rahimahullah said, If I'm the way you're saying, if I'm as bad as you're saying, may Allah forgive me. And if I'm not that bad and you're accusing me, may Allah forgive you. Subhanallah, what a beautiful reply. At a time when normally people lose their mind, they're out of their mind. He's saying, if I'm as bad as you're saying, may Allah forgive me. If I'm not as bad and you're just accusing me, may Allah forgive you. And there are so many incidents narrated about him in the history, about his patience, about controlling him, his nafs and his desire, his anger that are very surprising incidents and events. But as I we know, that through this, these sessions, we can go only through very few things about the life of each and every individual. That is only to introduce who these people were, and hopefully then we can learn more about them and learn our lessons from these great scholars of the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us <coughs> true followers of these scholars of the Ummah and give us tawfiq to follow the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa jma'een, and all the scholars of the Ummah that were loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did the right service to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah.